Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a little look at the tropics where we have two high threats of tropical cyclones going on in the Atlantic, one offshore of the East Coast, and then one that's going to be a long-term one to track, which is in our main development region. Alright, now before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that East Coast system is actually going to impact the East Coast, or do you think it's going to be offshore the whole time? Let me know in the comments down below what you think, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. As you can see on the thumbnail, I only indicated those two high-risk threats of becoming tropical cyclones. We didn't indicate that yellow one there, which is a threat, and then also Nicholas which is still around as a tropical depression over Texas and Louisiana. What a long-term uh, storm that really just brought a lot of impacts. It became a hurricane unexpectedly uh, just before reaching the Texas coast. We went live for about 30 minutes or an hour that morning when it was impacting, and it was just on the fence. It was a strong, strong, strong tropical storm, almost a hurricane at that point, and I indicated that there was the possibility. Obviously, it only needs to go up like five miles per hour. There's always a chance of that if it's that close, and it sure enough did happen. Let's just go ahead and take a look at these individually. The yellow one here, 30% chance, or sorry, 20% chance of development. I saw that three and it threw me off. 20% chance of development, this one, and it's gonna be heading northward. I don't really expect that one to be a United States threat at all, or, or really a, a land impact for the most part. Uh, that one should fizzle out. Now we also have this one right below it. 90% chance of development over the next five days. It'll be approaching the southern, uh, or sorry, the eastern Caribbean, better yet, and then the southern Caribbean after that maybe. Uh, if it goes underneath, but I think there is the possibility it goes north of Puerto Rico, north of the Dominican Republic, and north of Haiti, which always usually means a bigger threat. Uh, usually if they go south of there, that's a that's a sign that it's not really going to last too long, but if it goes north of there, it usually reaches more favorable conditions, and according to the spaghetti models, I think that's very possible. We'll talk about that later on. Here's that east coast threat, though. As you can see, this one has a 70% chance of development over the next five days, and this, you know, the, the National Hurricane Center is indicating it might impact the uh, outer banks there, if anything. I think there's a little bit better of a chance than that, uh, according to the spaghetti models as well. And then here's a look at Tropical Depression, uh, Nicholas, which should take a sharp northward turn uh, and then really fizzle out after that point, bringing a lot of rainfall, though. We're going to need to talk about the impacts that this Tropical Depression is going to have throughout Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, those areas, uh, even the Florida Panhandle in just a moment. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at those impacts and then we're going to start talking about the East Coast storm. We're going to talk about satellite imagery, spaghetti model guidance, intensity guidance, and then we're going to move on to that main development in region one and do the same exact thing in just a moment. All right, now here is the total rainfall expected according to the National Weather Service. And as you can see, if you're in the lighter greens, we expect one to two inches of rainfall. Darker greens is gonna be two to four inches of rainfall. Yellows is gonna be four to six. And then the oranges is gonna be six to 10 inches of rainfall. So we still expect some potential major flooding risks there for Southern Mississippi, Southern Alabama and the Florida Panhandle, especially there in the oranges. But even the yellows, I mean, four to six inches of rainfall, especially on top of what they already got from Ida uh, pretty recently. Uh, is going to be a little bit of a concern there. We're going to be watching this closely, obviously. And as we take a look at that flooding risk, you can see there's a moderate risk of flash flooding for all of that eastern corridor there of Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, and uh, Florida there. I think there's a reason they have a bigger risk over Louisiana, and I think it's because of how much rainfall they've seen within the past couple of weeks uh, compared to the surrounding regions. Because you notice Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Panhandle are expecting more rainfall, but I think Louisiana is just in a worse position to really handle the rainfall because they're expecting a little bit less, but they have the higher flash flooding risk. So I think the National Hurricane Center is indicating that right there, uh, which I think is a really, really good call at this point. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery for this East Coast one, and it's nowhere near being a tropical depression. I think, you know, it's going to take some organization. I think the soonest this could happen is uh, maybe, I mean, if it really gets its act together, maybe tonight or tomorrow morning, but it might take a bit longer than that, in my opinion, as well. It's going to reach some more favorable conditions as it heads further north. Let's take a look at that spaghetti model guidance, and first things first, we're taking a look at the GEFS model, which is our GFS ensemble model. And as you can see, this one is expected to pretty much head northward, but 
again, look at this. We have multiple members hitting the East Coast, whether it's North Carolina and Virginia, just offshore of the Delmarva in New Jersey. Uh, and we even have one that curves into New England as well. So there's multiple opportunities for an East Coast threat with this one that I just think isn't being indicated uh, by some of the forecasts. But by the spaghetti models, we see that it is a possibility. That's why on my thumbnail, you see that the red does come on shore a little bit because I keep all the, op basically I keep all the options on the table so that nobody gets caught off guard. It's always been my motto and it's gonna continue to be my motto. So if there's one spaghetti model showing it hit the East Coast, we are gonna observe that possibility uh, and put it on the thumbnails and the graphics because it's possible. We don't wanna let anybody get caught off guard and, and make it seem like that's been rolled out. Here's all the individual models. As you can see, a vast majority out to sea, but there's just a couple there that head towards the East Coast, North Carolina. I mean, that red one would particularly be a bad one because it heads just up the East Coast, would probably bring flooding rainfall to many different East Coast states if that was the case. So that would obviously be very, very impactful. By the way, this invest is called 96L. Uh, and here's our intensity guidance. And as you can see, these models within 24 hours, which would put us at tomorrow morning, very early, have this one at a tropical storm already. There is a little group there that keeps it kind of waiting and waiting and waiting until about, you know, 84, 96 hours out, but they're actually the minority here. We see the majority of models here have this one crossing over by hours 36 and even approaching hurricane status, as you can see, by hours 100 or so. Uh, there's about three that have a hitting category one status as well. So this one might be a hurricane. And with the way this hurricane season has gone, it's kind of easier to assume that that more stronger uh, option would be the one. These storms have frequently overperformed in, in almost every instance here with all of our tropical systems we've had in the Atlantic so far this year. So I'm definitely not ruling out hurricane status with this one. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on and take a look at that main development storm, which I think might be the biggest threat actually out of the two because it has so much longer and it could have a much more impactful track and it could be a stronger storm. So we're going to talk about that one in just a moment. So here is this Invest 95L is actually what it's called. And on satellite imagery here, as you can see, it actually looks like it's getting its act together quite nicely. Usually when we see these very tall clouds and big clusters of them, that means that this storm is intensifying and it's approaching tropical depression status. We see a lot of blacks and grays and whites going on. That is a strong, strong storm at this point. And I would say this one might, might become a tropical storm later today or tomorrow morning. Uh, in the East Coast one, it's going to be probably tomorrow morning, and it could be as long as a few days from now. So there's a much larger range with this that one, but this one I think is very close actually. Here's the spaghetti model guidance. We're going to take a look at the same ones, the GFS model, the GFS ensemble model, sorry, and then the individual models in just a moment. But as you can see, this one, according to this model, has a higher probability of going north of Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic than south of it. And as you can see, those blues and oranges indicate a stronger storm, and those are all the ones that go kind of north of Puerto Rico and north of Dominican Republic. So again, these storms tend to do better when they take that track. A lot of the ones that set it that head into the southern Caribbean, south of Puerto Rico, south Dominican Republic, they stay at 1,000 plus millibars, which is usually obviously a weaker storm than let's say a 990 or a 980 millibar low pressure system, which is what these blues and oranges are indicating. Now here's the individual models, and as you can see, a vast majority of these, basically the exception of one model there, have this one going north of Puerto Rico and north of Dominican Republic, which again means stronger storm is definitely more possible in that case scenario. We have one model that keeps it in the Southern Caribbean there. And again, that is gonna be the weaker option of the two. Here's the intensity guidance for this one. And as you can see, like I said, I mean, within 12 hours, I would say about half or more of these models have this one crossing over into tropical storm status. And all of them, except for two, have this one crossing over by hour 60. So that's going to be about two and a half days from now or so. So yeah, really, this one is likely going to be a tropical storm. And then we see a vast majority of these also crossing into Category 1 status at one point uh, within the next 72 hours for a majority of them, but by hours 180 on all of them that are that are crossing it into the hurricane status. That is, I'd say about half do, do that, maybe more. Let's see, one, two, three, four, don't, one, two three, four, five, six, have it crossing over into hurricane status. So yeah, I think there's a more possibility than not that this one does become a hurricane down the road, especially if it heads north of the Southern Caribbean. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. There's a lot of uncertainty with these two storms. They haven't developed yet. Usually once they start to develop, we get a little bit more of an idea of what to expect. So that's why our confidence is more moderate at best. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think we will cross back into fall-like temperatures? And Gary Logan said, 
The temperature, I believe, will start to drop dramatically about the 26th of September. And in yesterday's video, we talked about how after the 20th, the PNA switches, and that it is when a cooldown is very possible for the eastern United States, uh, if the models are correct, which, let's be real, it's pretty long range, so who knows. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerla Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Dennett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flaco, Gary, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this very awesome patron ice cream today, you can do so by joining our very amazing Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms one Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. This, if you're interested in joining, will be next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.